Um, thanks so much. So I just wanted to do a, a, another additional to uh, your lead in and just a quick recap for folks who may have just um, joined us tonight on this discussion. As um, Chair Knowles mentioned, we did um, discuss this extensively last week and did sort of a nice collaborative editing session together, which was really helpful. And um, prior to that, we'd had a number of uh, board members give input um, and staff had ex extensive input in as well. And then after last week's session, um, had uh, additional input from Director Buell. So um, what I attempted to do in trying to shepherd this through, given that we had already had that extensive editing session as a full board and had kind of agreed upon what the, the final version would be. So what I did was, um, and I think um, Director Buell brought forward today four additional changes he'd like to see. What he had had, um, I think, six pieces um, after this went to the board book, and we talked it through. We're and down to, we're down to four. I'd like to get down to one. I put down, I put in um, two of those in what you see for, mm -hmm, and I mm -hmm, emailed right. everyone to give you the update of what those two pieces were, and then he's um, now bringing forward an additional four. But what I was trying to do in the final version that's um, before you is to strike a balance between respecting that he had still additional changes he wanted to make with our collective editing work that we had done. So that's just a little bit about that process. <clears throat> and then just for myself personally, I just wanted to kind of reiterate where I'm coming from with this resolution. Again, I really appreciate the collaborative work of board partners and staff in getting us to this. To me, it's a couple things. One is um, I feel like we have the potential with the Smarter Balance Assessment to have something that is much better than what we have with the Oak standardized test. But what we're trying to ex express here to the state and federal government is our number, the number of concerns about getting it right in the implementation, um, some specific technical pieces and just the larger um, questions around resources and time. So that's all laid out in here in pretty extensive detail. Um, and then the second piece um, for me and I think others, but I just want to say this as a personal statement, is that it's really important that we have a strong value statement as a board around um, wanting to teach the whole child that we're not about teaching to the test. Um, so I think the, that's the, sort of the two main aims for me with this resolution. Again, I really appreciate um, the collaboration and, and um, input that went into this and um, look forward to sharing this um, with the state and the federal um, government and would welcome further conversation with those folks about how um, we can get this right for our kids and our teachers. And I'm supporting it. Other, <laughs> Other comments? Tell me when you want Other comments? No? No comments? I have a comment, okay. but at the end. Okay, so. After we pass on maybe. Oh, and I'd love um, the opportunity to to read this into the record at some point during our right. process tonight. Well, that's okay. So the way, mm -hmm. so everybody knows, we're figuring out how this goes forward. So um, what we'll do, or how we always do these, is we have a motion, and we have that, and we have public comment, um, and then we have discussion on the resolution, and then we'll vote. And at that time, um, if there are amendments you want to make. Uh, to the resolution, you should do those at that time. And each amendment okay. requires a second. I can do it. And then we discuss that. So, and then, then we vote on them, and then we're done. Okay. I can do so, it. So, would you like to make your comments now? Okay. Okay. Go ahead. I'm I'm planning to vote for this amendment, whether or not I mean this resolution, whether or not my amendments pass. So, one of the amendments that I have is incredibly important that we pass it if we're going to end up with a really a, quite a quite a really excellent uh, resolution and it's kind of the whether or not how it's how it's accepted has to do with one phrase that I'd like to remove but uh, here's my comments it is important for us to understand what this resolution does and does not do it does two things it tells the state that they don't have their act together on the new SBAC testing enough to ask us to take it seriously and use it to really inform our children's learning. It is, a, it is frankly a mess. We are telling them to work on it some more and then tell us what they want to do with it. That's one section. And that's what this, and to me, that's what it says. Secondly, it makes a clear statement that testing is no more important than other important parts of the education of our children. 
This tells our principals, and most importantly, our vice principals, they're the people who often come out and do the evaluations, that when they are being educational leaders or evaluators, they are to make sure standards and testing are not the single focus, nor even the dominant focus concerning the education of our children. There's so many other things that are important, and what happens in education is the Edu administrators, lately, this is the last few years, they get one thing and they go with that, go with that, go with that, but they forget that you have also fourth grade social studies, you have also fourth grade, uh, fourth grade civics, you also have fourth grade science and so forth and so forth, not just fourth grade common core. So we need to make it clear to our people that, that it's, when you're going out and looking at what's taking place in your school, it's broader than that. What this resolution is not, it does not address the over-testing we are doing. Hopefully the superintendent will put together the committee she promised soon. Mm -hmm. This is not a referendum on Common Core, even though it could be referred to as a referendum on common sense. The problems with Common Core are not addressed, which is fine, because that's not the point of this, particularly the early childhood problems. I had another conversation recently with a friend who is working for an ESD, she's kind of running it, <coughs> who was going to work with one of the state hubs and she was lamenting the changes in early childhood programs and the new state kindergarten readiness testing. Person after person after person who works at this grade level laments this and criticizes what the Common Core does with it. And so we're not doing that, but it's something that should be done. Finally, it is not the end of this problem. The state continues to act in a manner which treats children as data points using a business model, and we need to make sure we stand up for the children in our district. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Okay, do you want to do um, amendments? So you're, anybody else have amendments? Okay. No. So, <clears throat> Director Buell, do you want to? I could start, do the. Oops. Move an amendment? Yes, so I do, I but I lost, uh, I lost oh, the, I know I lost the, I got the amendment, I lost the original. The original resolution, yes. can I? Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. This is, uh, th I think this amendment's critical to the success of this particular resolution. Because so we do the amendment first, say what the amendment is, and then your reasoning. You want me to do yes, the reasoning please. afterwards? Yes. Okay. Uh, in section C, eliminate the following. I, I move to amend the resolution number, 4943 to, uh, to eliminate the following language in section C, quote, and in the evaluation of teachers, quote. Okay. Do, you, do you have anything else you want to say about Yep. It? Okay. This is, the question is how good do we want well, to? Yeah, we need a second first. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Oh, second. Okay. Director Curler seconding. The, no, go ahead. The reason this is a critical amendment is because we want our teachers to understand that we're there on this topic. And we want people all over the state of Oregon to understand we're there. And if we're going to say, you know, we think it's okay, which kind of was what we kind of say here, we say it's our values, okay to use test standardized testing in some manner for evaluating teachers. We're turning off, every teacher in the entire district practically will, can look at that and say, no, that doesn't make, no, geez, I thought they were really close to having a great, really close to having a great resolution, one that really makes a statement. This, and leaving this language in turns off teacher after teacher, not every teacher, it turns after teacher after teacher after teacher, person after person, all over the state, all over the country, because everybody who's really followed this stuff knows and understands that there is no such thing as a standardized test that accurately correlates and is, and is able to actually measure and evaluate teachers based on student learning. There isn't anything, they, it hasn't exact, they try to do it with the VAM, uh, which is the value added model, it doesn't work, it, it just doesn't work. Everybody who pays attention to that practically understands that. Okay. And so by leaving that in there, we're weakening this to the point instead of going, hey, this is fabulous, this is a great resolution. By leaving that in there, we're saying, eh, it's a pretty good resolution. Not bad. I'm going to vote for other, it either way, by the way. Okay. And then I have three other. If we pass that, I won't bother with the other three amendments. Mm, that's <laughs> other comments? So I have, a, I have a question about that, and maybe um, maybe Director Buell can help can help answer, or others on the board can help answer. Yeah. It's my understanding that the I mean, listening to the work that's happened from the committee um, that has helped design our 
um, our teacher evaluation, uh, they've grappled with this issue. Is that is that right? Yes. So yes. grapple and and currently. Um, Asset, this assessment is one of, as, it descri as it's described in the recital, one of many of the tools that we That's use correct. in that evaluation process. 20% or less, right? Yeah, and it's, it's part of our ability to meet Senate Bill 290. Right, That's, that was my yeah. next right. question, is the, um, the, the state requirement of it being a component. So as, as you were saying, I, frankly, um, I don't necessarily disagree with you. I think you look at um, the uh, you look at teachers who may be mediocre teachers at a uh, affluent school, and their test scores are going to be higher. You can look at excellent teachers in the same grade at uh, a poorer school, and their test scores may be lower. Um, that to me doesn't give a clear idea of the parity of what those those teachers are doing. Um, so, as a snapshot, that in and of itself may give may paint the wrong picture. Um, but I'm I'm interested in how do we how do we recon reconcile the work that's happened on the the committee uh, and the the requirement of the state in this in this recital. And, and, that's that's, my and that's what we were attempting to do with, uh -huh. with the wording, which says, in accordance with state law and our own values, standardized testing is only one of many tools to be used in the assessment of student growth and in the evaluation of teachers. Uh -huh. And you should go on. Want me to respond? So could we call the question? Want me to respond to Respond to if you're mad, I'd like to respond to one because okay. it's okay. a good point. Uh, yeah, that's a real good point, Matt. The other problem is that if you take the same teacher and do the same test twice, mm -hmm. year to year, it doesn't correlate either. I mean, it, the, I, I don't remember the exact statistics, but I think the standard deviation, something like where you know you might want to get down around five percent, it's like fifty some percent. I once did a. I once did a writing test in my own personal classroom, and I had two classes that we had killed practically to get them equal, and we even flip-flopped them. I taught them the same curriculum practically every day, and at the end of the year, one of them was at 80%, and one was at 30% passing. 30% passing was terrific for that school. 80% passing was unheard of. Maybe still be the record on that. In there, but the point is, this is a 50% difference. Same, we balanced those kids the best they could because there had been a big fight the year before, and we said, "Hey, you're giving me too many kids who are struggling and back and forth." We, you, it does not work. And the problem that I suggested that we, when Ruth and I talked about this, and I really appreciate the work Ruth did on this, it, I said, "Take out our own values." I take that out, and then it says, "Because we're stuck with the state telling us we have to do it, we're stuck with it." But the state could tells us, could tell us other things that we disagree with. They could pass a law that said the legislature gets, uh, gets this wild hair and passes a law that says you need to have corporate punishment for such and such things. We wouldn't agree with it. We might do it, but we sure wouldn't tell them we agree with it, and we shouldn't tell them we agree with this because it doesn't work. And, and it's not accurate. And since it's not accurate, and the research shows over and over and over and over and over and over it's not accurate, I don't think we should agree with it. So I, I'd go taking out either of these. I, I think well, I'll skip well, right with now the evaluation of teachers. So let's, let's stick yeah, with those I, for in now. In the evaluation of teachers, okay. we'll take yeah. that out. So calling the yeah. question. Okay. Um, and I don't think there are any more comments anyway. So. Um, okay. So to vote on uh, the amendment of Section C to eliminate the language and in the evaluation of teachers, all those in. The voice box. Yeah. Yeah. All those in I favor. Mean, uh, <laughs> All those in favor of uh, amending. Roll call. The, hey, just a second. All those in favor of amending. Okay. All those opposed. Uh, you want me to have? Aye. Okay. Aye. Adkins. Aye. Belisle. Aye for opposed. Mm -hmm. To amending it. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Mark, oh, Buell? I think you're supposed to have the roll call yeah, yeah. vote instead of the voice vote when it's called for. 
Well, that's what we're doing right now. No, the You'll roll call vote. That would be called by Ms. Houston, right? I don't think so. You want I to think call it's the called roll call by me. vote? Is it called and by let's me? Let's make sure that we all know what okay. we're doing. Yeah, by Karen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Ms. Houston, would you like to call the roll? Thank you. I don't mean to be difficult, but it's I okay. want this on tape. And this is in This is uh, for those who, well, first of all, in support of Removing. amending Resolution 4943, Section C, to eliminate the language and in the evaluation of teachers. Okay. Director Atkins? No. Director Regan? No. Director Belial? No. Director, Director Buell? Yes. Director Morton? No. Director Curler? No. And Chair Knowles? No. So did you have another? Yeah, three more minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. Section E. Add this so, language okay. after this statement. Okay, I would uh, uh, make so, an amendment to. Uh, yeah, I know it has to be said. Make an amendment to add this language in section E after the statement. The intent of SBA is to more authentically access, assess students by embedding both constructed response and performance tasks within the assessment. We would add the language. We have no idea of this in, if this intent has been met in the SBA test, nor do we have any assurance that it will be met. Did you want a roll call vote on this as well? First, we need a second. A second? Okay, for lack of a second, we'll just move on to the next okay, one. Okay, section F. Mm -hmm. uh, I move to amend section F to add this language after this language. With the, with the expectation that statewide testing will begin in spring of 2015, add the language after that, which begins, Further, we request that the State Department of Education share the test in its entirety with our administration so we can assess the various questions concerning the adequacy of the test for use in our district. Do you have a second? I'll second that one. Okay, Director Regan seconds. Do we have uh, comments, board yeah. comment? Director Buell? They're going to ask us, if the state of Oregon is going to ask us to give a test to every one of our kids, of which we're going to pay about $25 a kid, plus we're going to spend hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars on the test, we ought to at least be able to look at the test and see if it makes sense. And we can't. And that's crazy. And they can say whatever they want. It's nice that, you, that we went and talked to Arnie Duncan. I like it. That sounds fun. I wish I would have been there. But uh, I'm sorry, Arnie, you're screwed up on this. We should be able to look at the test. Do we not trust? our testing people? Do we not trust our superintendent? Who is it we don't trust here so we can look at the test and see if it makes sense for our district? And so we should tell them we should be able to look at the test. So, Director Atkins? So I guess my um, response to this would be just in terms of the process where we went through in crafting this resolution and editing it, that we worked really closely with our staff and on teaching and learning as well as um, research and evaluation weighed in as well. And so what we landed on in terms of our requests to the state, our list of concerns, very specific concerns to the state, um, that's where we landed. And so that's where um, I personally felt comfortable in what we would, um, what would request to the state and what was appropriate in terms of our staff's response in handling it. Um, I think we have outlined a number of issues and concerns and challenges and again, this is a call for the state to respond and to demonstrate. We call out specifically that the, the state, it's on the state to show that this test is going to be reliable and valid and culturally responsive, and we're calling for that. So um, this was not a piece that, um, in working with staff, they, um, we did not include it. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Other comments? Bye. So I was curious about this and um, fairly supportive of it, although, um, Director Buell, I would suggest, since this is actually a request, that it, rather than having this in the recitals, it should actually be moved to number two in the um, resolved, so I don't know if that could be a friendly amendment, but number two in the resolved currently says, the board calls upon the state to provide the funding necessary to carry out any of the state's educational mandates. Specifically, the board calls upon the state to provide the funding necessary to implement the Smarter Balance Assessment effectively 
including funding and time for both professional development and technology resource implementation. If we added your sentence there, it would say further, we request the State Department of Education share the test in its entirety with our administration so it can assess the various questions concerning the adequacy of the test for use in our district. So to me, it makes more sense to have it as part of our resolves and the request to the state than to have it in the recitals. Because normally the recitals are just kind of the background information. So. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I'd certainly accept that as a friendly change to my amendment, which is Robert's Rules of Order stuff is okay to go ahead and change that. And does anyone know so, why well, specifically we don't allow the just, state can I just, allowing that? Dr. Reagan, could you just hang on a second? Um, so actually, I think in Robert's Rules of Order that we need to finish with this one first, and then you would go ahead and do another okay. one on this, okay. or you could can go I, ahead I'll and bring this again. I'll withdraw that motion. How about that? Okay. And okay. then why don't you okay. go ahead and change so you withdraw your second? Okay. You can, wow. So go ahead. You can. Okay. Um, move that we take the language that of the previous motion and place it where the end of number two. At the end of number two, where Director Regan suggested. Under resolutions. Mm -hmm. Number two under resolutions. And I would second that. Okay, so any other discussion on that? I think it'd be no. fun to have a roll okay. call Shall on we go this ahead? one. It'd be fun okay. to have a roll call on this one. We're doing roll calls tonight. Ms. Houston, would you call the roll? Director Atkins? No. Director Regan? Yes. Director Belisle? No. Director, Director Buell? Yes. Director Martin? Yes. Director Curler? Yes. And Chair Knowles? No. Okay. okay. It passes. Yep. I think we have to let Ms. Houston tell us that, though. I said three to four. Tell us that it passed? It, no. It passed four to three? One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah, four to three. So four to three. Four. Director Regan, One, Director Buell, Director Curler, Director Morton. Mm -hmm. Did pass. Okay, did you want to do No, I'll just I'll let the other one go. Okay it's okay. okay, thank okay. you. All right, great. Mm -hmm. Yes, now we get to vote. On the whole thing. And could I add one, add one more request just in terms of process, whether it's before or after the vote, that we do have the opportunity as a board to read this into the record? Okay, sure. So your call, whoever you yeah. So we will have to remember whoever has that section that I have to yeah, include I have, that part. Uh, that's actually, I believe, Director Buell's section. So there you, you can just add in that wording. I just wrote in the first three words with a dot, 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 and then you can just add that it's in because I can't write right neatly and fast okay. enough. Okay. The board will now vote on resolution 4943 as amended. All in favor, please indicate by saying yes. 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 All opposed, say no. Are there any abstentions? Great. Resolution 4943 is approved of, by a vote of 7 to 0. Great. So, yay. Thank you, everybody. And so, we will now take the time to go ahead and read that into the record. I think we're going to take turns. Yeah, I appreciate that. Long. So I, I'm just going to pass along a copy that I've just taken the liberty of chunking out and marking with names. So thank you, everybody. Okay. So resolution number 4943, resolution on Im implementation of smarter ballast assessment. Recitals A. At Portland Public Schools, our goal is that every student by name meets or exceeds academic standards and is fully prepared for college, career, and participation as an active community member, regardless of race, class, or zip code. The Board of Directors is committed to educating a populace of critical and creative thinkers who are capable of shaping a just and equitable society to lead good and purpose-filled lives ready to participate in a global economy. B. As a school board, we have high expectations for our students and staff. We believe that all PPS students can succeed academically and we do not shy away from being held accountable for student success. Because of these high expectations, we want to ensure that any accountability measure for our students and schools is reliable, valid, and has been adopted with a culturally responsive lens. C, the PPS school board does not support teaching to the test. We believe in teaching the whole child and in the ability of skilled educators to creatively instill a lifelong love of learning. In accordance with state law and our own values, standardized testing is only one of many tools to be used in the assessment of student growth and in the evaluation of teachers. 
Testing should not dominate the culture or instructional time in our schools. As a school board, we believe the ultimate role of assessment is to improve instruction, not to demean teachers or principals or to label students or schools. In addition, we recognize that no single assessment gives us the ability to accurately determine our impact on student learning. Classroom formative assessments designed by teachers, student work product reflecting proficiency and generalization of learning, and in-program assessments found within curriculum resources are but three other critical indicators of student achievement and teacher, principal, school, and district efficacy. A new assessment system aligned with Oregon's current math and English language arts standards is scheduled to begin in the 2014-15 school year. Along with over 20 other states, Oregon is a member of the Smarter Balanced Assessment Consortium formed to create the new Smarter Balanced Assessment, which will replace the Oregon Assessment of Knowledge and Skills, or OAKS, test. The intent of SBA, the Smarter Balanced Assessment, is to more authentically assess students by embedding both constructed response and performance tasks within the assessment. 24 Portland Public Schools helped pilot the Smarter Balanced Assessment in the spring. It is our understanding that the results from the 2014 field test will not be available until late November or early December of 2014, with the expectation that statewide testing will begin in spring of 2015. Given this timeline, we are knowingly entering a school year expecting all students to demonstrate their understanding of math and English language arts without first having seen evidence that the assessment is reliable, valid, and free from cultural, linguistic, linguistic and socioeconomic bias. Recital H. Based on the history of No Child Left Behind and its waiver that designates focus and priority schools, the United States Department of Education is anticipated to continue its practice of using assessment results to hold states, districts, and schools accountable through the use of report cards, labels, and sanctions. Recital I. Oregon has just begun to reinvest in K-12 education after nearly 20 years of budget cuts following the passage of measures 5 and 47 and 50, the statewide property tax limitation initiatives. Oregon school funding is still nearly two billion short of the state's quality education model, which outlines the funding necessary to ensure all students are successful. Adding new unfunded mandates jeopardizes schools, school districts' fragile ability to reinvest resources to better serve <coughs> students and to meet the state's 40-40-20 goals. We know that other school districts in Oregon face similar challenges. Recital J. The Oregon Education Investment Board's equity lens states, quote, speaking a language other than English is an asset and, continued later, our education system must celebrate and enhance this ability alongside appropriate and culturally responsive support for English as a second language. Again, continued, Students receiving special education services are an integral part of our educational responsibility and we must welcome the opportunity to be inclusive, make appropriate accommodations, and celebrate their assets. It continues, that resource allocation demonstrates our priorities and our values and that we demonstrate our priorities and, commit and our commitment to rural communities, communities of color, English language learners, and out-of-school youth in ways we allocate resources and make educational investments, and it continues, and that an equitable education system requires providing teachers with the tools and support to meet the needs of each student. Many national organizations have called for a moratorium of at least one year on any sanctions based on new assessments, including the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the American Association of School Administrators, the American School Counselor Association, the International Society for Technology and Education, the National Association of Elementary School Principals, the National Association of Secondary School Principals, the National Education Association, and the American Federation of Teachers, the National School Boards Association, and the National Parent Teacher Association. Recital L. The PPS School Board identifies the following challenges and concerns around the state's implementation of the Smarter Balanced Assessment. <coughs> Lack of an established reliability and validity of Smarter Balanced Assessments across all racial groups, socioeconomic groups, and learner types. 
insufficient accommodations in the SBA for English language learners and students with disabilities, which creates new, new barriers to student success and will disproportionately impact those students. The computer skills, such as keyboarding and drag and drop, necessary for third graders to successfully take the test will rely on access to technology and training as early as kindergarten, which is not consistently available in all schools or in all student homes. The resource impact of implementing the Smarter Balanced Assessment extends beyond the standards-based professional development of teachers. The state will need to identify cut scores for SBA without having received field test results, creating challenges for linking to previous achievement data and providing students with expectations in a timely manner. In addition, there are concerns about whether correlation of SBA results with previous achievement data can be accurately accomplished. As the state testing window is dramatically narrowed during the 12 weeks to complete both math and ELA SBA, Portland Public School students in grades 3 through 8 and 11 will be engaged in approximately 7 to 8 and, eight and one half hour of testing. The current Oaks Science Assessment Remains a Multiple Choice Test is not built so students may demonstrate their skill in scientific inquiry and is not used as an active part of the existing State of Oregon report card. Technology purchases to upgrade student digital devices will minimally, minim, minimally mm -hmm. cost Portland Public Schools $1.2 million of our general fund budget. Resolution, Section 1, <coughs> Portland Public School Portland Public School School Board directs the superintendent to ensure that teaching and learning in PPS are focused on education of the whole child and not on teaching to the test. That pedagogy is designed to meet the needs of all students while achieving educational standards. That educational standards are incorporated into teaching and learning in a balanced manner, along with other educational objectives supporting education of the whole child that testing does not dominate the culture of, or instructional time in our schools, that assessments are used to improve instruction, not to penalize teachers or principals or to label students or schools, and that assessments are implemented to maximize the intended flexibility, collaboration, learning, and creativity in the classroom. The board call two, section two. The board calls upon the state to provide the funding necessary to carry out any of the state's educational mandates. Specifically, the board calls upon the state to provide the funding necessary to implement the Smarter Balanced Assessment effectively, including funding and time for both professional development and technology resource implementation. Further, we request that the State Department of Education share the test in its entirety with our administration so we can assess the various questions concerning the adequacy of the test for use in our district. The board, re three, the board requests that the state not use the Smarter Balanced Assessment for punitive labeling or sanctioning of students, <coughs> teachers, schools, or districts. There must be assurances on the reliability and validity of the assessment. Use of an unreliable or invalid <coughs> smarter balanced assessment could undermine student enthusiasm for learning, could create devastating outcomes for schools, and could set schools and communities back years if not managed well at the state and local levels. Number four, the board calls upon the state to establish a transitional or pilot status for the smarter balance assessment starting with its initial implementation in 2015 to provide sufficient time to ensure the reliability of the test, to provide additional teacher professional development, and to provide students and families the opportunity to understand and learn from the results of the new assessment without the high stakes consequences that may have the unintended outcome of undermining student success. The board encourages, number five, the board encourages the state and federal department of education to continue to provide students with opportunities to demonstrate essential skills for graduation through additional summative assessments such as work samples. Number six, the board addresses the federal, uh, asks the Federal Department of Education to grant the state's request to delay the use of SBA in the teacher evaluation system for the student data portion, given that there is, no, there is not baseline data to use for effective goal setting. Number seven, the board requests that the state eliminate current hoax science testing to reduce the amount of standardized assessments, allowing for a laser focus on implementation of small, smarter balanced assessment and for alternative forms of assessment that allow students to demonstrate their skills in scientific inquiry. 
Number eight, the board directs the superintendent to submit these requests to the Oregon Department of Education and the United States Department of Education and share this resolution with our state and congressional representatives. Number nine, in the meantime, the board asks the superintendent, the state, and other partners to continue and expand their efforts to inform and engage parents and community during the transition to the Smarter Balanced Assessment. Number 10, the board directs the superintendent to provide regular reports to the board on the preparation and implementation of the Smarter Balanced Assessment. Number 11, finally, the board thanks the superintendent, staff, and teachers at PPS for their shared commitment to providing a quality, well-rounded education with high expectation for all students. And thank you again to uh, our board committee and staff and everyone else who had a piece of this.